very warm welcome everybody. Um, our studies is in the Gospel of John and we're looking again at the key verse here. We've got these things have been written so that you may believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So it's just a reminder that the Gospel of John is written with that at the heart that we might come to know and believe in Jesus and have eternal life and that this life of eternal life is in his name by believing on the person of Jesus. And so um, we highlight the wonderful scripture about God loving the world. So behind this gospel is, uh, is the God of heaven and earth who loves us. He loves the world, um, not the things of the world or the things of the flesh. He loves the creation that he's made, you and I. He's made us in his image and he loves us. And he loves us so much that he's given us his son, that whoever believes on him should not, the negative, perish and suffer the fate of eternal fire, but rather to have eternal joy, eternal love, eternal security in his name. So that's the wonderful message that we have in this gospel. And so we're along our road of um, John's introducing Jesus as God the Son. And we're starting to move towards the end of this chapter where he's shown us where Jesus is the Word, is the, all of the ideas of the, the Word of God, and now he's placing Jesus on the earth and revealing to us the impact of Jesus to humanity. So he's the God of heaven and the God of the earth. So he's, he's the truth and the idea of the concepts of truth, then are meeting with reality. And so he wants to introduce us to the person of Jesus, who's both God and man. Mm. He makes that line, that line of truth, from heaven to earth, that we can trust. And so he's going to start to reveal that to us. So in John chapter 1, verses 43 to 45, only a couple of verses today, we're going to see how Jesus then calls people to follow him and we'll starting then um, we'll have a, a little look at the video of the life of Jesus just to put it into some understanding if you've not seen it before the gospel of John um, then goes through literally the, the words and we're going to enter into uh, the bit which we're looking at today day, John was standing there again with two of his disciples, when he saw Jesus walking by. There's the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and went with Jesus. Then he took Simon to Jesus.
Jesus looked at him. My name is Simon, son of John. But you will be called Cephas. This is the same as Peter and means a rock. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip. And said to him, Come with me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the town where Andrew and Peter lived. Jesus, the Son of God, being revealed, and John the Baptist cries out that he is the Lamb of God. Here we have the fulfillment of these scriptures that were written long before, and how exciting it was to live at a time when the very person himself, the creator of the universe, became flesh and walked amongst them. And to have that wonderful revelation that he was the Lamb of God. What an awesome and incredible experience for those disciples. And so you can understand how they were running to and fro, saying, come and see! Come and see! Their eyes have been opened and therefore their hearts have been so excited they couldn't stop but run around telling everybody who they were guided to. The scriptures say that the next day he purposed to go into Galilee. He purposed. So Jesus had a plan in his ministry. Once he had been anointed through the Holy Spirit after his baptism, he then stepped into the plan that the Lord, his Father, had for him. And immediately he then met Andrew um, and his brother. And then he says he goes to Galilee and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, that it was quite underplayed in the video. And he says, follow me. We're going to look at that a little bit later because that's very important within the Jewish Old Testament and the relationship um, in the understanding of sheep and people who followed the prophet, like Moses, followers. Mo now, Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. So we're, we're looking at cities then. We've got Bethsaida and then Philip found Nathaniel. So we've got this word recurring. Jesus found Philip. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So John's giving us a real indication here that found's quite important. He's repeated this several times. So with follow me and found, I want to explore that a little bit deeper today, have the opportunity to look at the idea of him finding Philip and then say, follow me. Now, there is something called the law of first occurrence. And we find that in the Bible, the first occurrence of follow me is when Abraham, in the in book of Genesis, was asked, uh, asking Eliezer, his servant, to um, find Isaac a wife, which is quite interesting if you think about it, we reflect on it. Abraham was old, advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in every way. Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who had ch chain, uh, charge of all that he owned, Please place your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord that the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you shall not take a wife for my son, 
from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live. But you will go to my country and to my relatives and take a wife for my son, Isaac. The servant said to him, suppose the woman is not willing to follow me. First occurrence of follow me. To this land. Should I take your son back to the land from where you came? Interesting on reflection. Prophecy in the Bible um, has the idea of repetition and the idea of types. And this is really exciting when you look into it and think about it. Here we have the idea of Abraham asking Eliezer, his servant, to go and find a wife for his son Isaac. Now we have the idea from the New Testament that Jesus is God's son. And sometimes you hear, sometimes uh, people, teachers talking about Eliezer being type of the Holy Spirit. And the idea he helps to go and find him. And here we have this link to follow me, where he was to ask the bride to follow the servant, to be introduced to his hus to the husband, to the bridegroom, mm. which is an interesting thought. If we then follow that through to the New Testament teaching of bride, we have in the book of Revelation that then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth uh, passed away. And there's no longer any sin. So it's talking about the new heavens and the new earth. And then I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride. So it's an interesting idea that we know that the scriptures talk, uh, is inspiring us, encouraging us to then reflect through Jesus finding these disciples He's finding a bride, which is then quite interesting to think about him being a young man. He was a 30-year-old man. He was Almighty God, the Son, but he was also 100% human, a Jewish man. And most men would get married. How interesting that Jesus, when he started his ministry, his father was providing for him, you and me, we're his bride. That's special, isn't it? Mm. There's nothing as special to somebody as a bride. And there we have, all that long time ago, the Lord sending his son, preparing his bride. Our names are written in that city, and he's sought us out. He's found us and placed us in that city with our names written there. How wonderful. What a lovely reflection in the idea of him saying, follow me. Because as a good shepherd, he's guiding his sheep. And Peter says, for you have been called for this purpose, since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example to follow in his steps. And here we have the idea that he found Philip as an, uh, an example of discipleship. Philip got the message. He understood who Jesus was. That's so exciting. Mm. He then went and found Nathaniel. Mm. We likewise, once we receive the message and we understand our eyes of our heart to open to whom Jesus really is, mm -hmm. We also, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, are led to share with others who Jesus is and where to find him. If you have the message, you can't help but share the message. So in time and space, in history, we have that place where Philip was from. He was from a city called the House of or, yeah, the house of Fish, Bethsaida. And there on the coast of the Sea of Galilee, he grew up with the likes of Andrew and Peter at the synagogue. They would have known each other possibly. And there he was in the House of Fish, which is, of course, why Jesus in another gospel says, 
I shall make you fishers of men. The idea, the practicality of Jesus with their knowledge of fishing from that village, living from the, in the city of fish, he would make them fishes of men. So there we have a foundation of what it means to be a disciple. John's encouraging people who reading this as believers, this text, or even as new believers to come to understand who Jesus is. For us as believers who come to this text, we can see you cannot separate discipleship from sharing the message. The very process of actually becoming into the knowledge of Jesus then leads you then to share the message of Jesus. It's part and parcel of the process. And what a beautiful place they grew up in. As a city, there's also the reflection with Abraham. He was looking for the city that's not made with human hands. He's looking for the eternal city, which is our destiny. So these cities like Bournemouth or Oxford are just temporary cities. But we're on a journey to an eternal city, which is where our hope is. Our hope is there, in that city. Jesus, when he talks about Jerusalem, went outside of the city gates. And we're encouraged to go outside of the city gates, just like Jesus. We need to go outside of the city gates in that we are rejected often by the people of our city, whether it's Oxford or Bournemouth, because we belong to another city. We belong to the city, the New Jerusalem. So Philip found Nathaniel. It's an interesting word for that search, for the law of first occurrence again. And here we have in Genesis 1 again. Then the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Ah, oh, this is interesting. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Jesus was and is a man. Here we have that link again, this idea of the father's provision. Here we have Adam, the first Adam. He was provided with a bride. Jesus is called the second Adam. And likewise, the father has provided for him a bride. Out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and to the birds of the sky and to the beast of every field. But for Adam, there was not found a suitable helper for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. Could we see maybe the deep sleep, a reflection maybe of the cross, maybe the, a, a type there. And also, can we see maybe of the ribs that Jesus was also wounded in his side where the water and the blood flowed. And from the blood of Jesus, he says, this is my new covenant. Drink in remembrance of me. The Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. So from the Lord's death at the cross, we have this idea that the Lord is forming a bride. For those who believe on Jesus through the death of the cross and the resurrection, we have the eternal hope of that, of that city by becoming a member of the bride, the bride, the heavenly Jerusalem. There's the scripture from John 19, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. Out of our sin, the original sin and our sin, the Lord hung on that cross for us. He did it as a good shepherd so that we might be found. The wall of the city had 12 foundation stones and on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Nathaniel was found by Philip. And it's no accident, the timing of everything, because 
when you reflect on the city of Jerusalem, it's an eternal city. The foundation stones have the names of all the apostles on them. So when Jesus sought and found out Philip, he found one of those foundation stones, because the name of the foundation stone is Philip. And then Philip found Nathaniel, otherwise known as Bartholomew. And his name was also written on a foundation stone, like Andrew and all of the 12 disciples. There was no accident that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, because you, before the foundations of the earth, had your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's no accident that you have been found. How remarkable. Jesus selected those twelve, not because it was chance, but because the Father had their names written on the eternal city where you and I will dwell, where the Lord had prepared for us before the foundation of the earth. An incredible, wonderful mystery revealed through the scriptures. So by faith, we live like Abraham. He was called, obeying to go to a place which he was, uh, was to receive for an inheritance. Mm. So you and I, as we live by faith, are going to receive an inheritance. We will receive rewards as we're faithful to the Lord. We are saved by grace, we are found, and now the Lord calls us to step into that which he has prepared beforehand, to step into the works which he's prepared for us already. We don't need to be anxious, we don't need to be worried, we don't need to be stressed, we just, by faith, we wake up in the morning, we praise him, we thank him, we're filled with him, and we walk with him in joy in our hearts through the day, acknowledging that he's holding us by his hands and he's glorifying himself in and through us as we step out in faith, seeking to do the works which he has called us to. He obeyed, did Abraham. He went out, not knowing where he was going. And sometimes we're called, as followers of Jesus, to step out to a place where we no longer know where we're going. It's a step by step, day by day, walking hand in hand with the almighty God. He lived as an alien in the land of promise. And even though I've been brought back to Bournemouth here, also, I'm a member of the New Jerusalem. I'm an alien, even though this is my hometown. I've come back here mm -hmm. trusting by faith that the Lord's doing his will. Because we belong to the city of promise. He dwelt in his tent with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. And so as the members of the church, we dwell together. We are passing through, sojourners in the land mm. with that journey. We work together as a team, mm. as servants of the Lord, knowing that he's building his church for his glory. And the builder is God. So the city which has foundations, our apostles, have led us to understanding of the text of the scriptures, and then we're being built as a bride into his body. And we're part of that. But as it is, they desire a better country. That is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared a city for them. He's not ashamed to be called your God. He's the God of heaven and earth. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's our God. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And he's your shepherd and mine. How exciting mm. to take that step of faith and walk with him to that city that he's prepared for us. Philip found Nathaniel. Mm. We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Wow. There, Jesus of Nazareth, growing up in that city, with a father that was not his biological father, but he gave him a legal status, the son of Joseph. But Joseph, of course, as a name, also implies the Joseph of the ancestors, who also was taken and placed 
into a jail. And then after he was placed in a jail, he then was released and then he became a leader. And so we have this idea within the Jewish context, the idea of a Messiah as the son of Joseph. So there is that implication here, although there was a physical Joseph in Nazareth, the carpenter. When we look at things physical, we must also, as followers of Jesus, understand that the Lord is doing the spiritual. We're not walking in a physical battle, we're walking in a spiritual battle. And here we have this idea that Jesus is the almighty Son of God, whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote. But he's also a human being who made a way for us so that we can then also go and join him. Jesus of Nazareth, a man in history, a simple carpenter who was the almighty God and has transformed this earth but he's going to do far more. He's got so much more left. Amen. The church is just the beginning. Amen. We're going to see a heavenly Jerusalem. We're going to see the kingdom of God. But that heavenly Jerusalem is eternal that we're, we're destined for. There he was in Cana, which he then did a miracle a little bit while later. The first miracle, showing, revealing himself. So there he was in Nazareth. And then... We're going to find out soon. He's going to go to Cana and he's going to turn, make a wedding. Very special. This idea of this bride that you and I belong to, that he's established and he's establishing. There was Nazareth back in the days. Holman Hunt, I believe, drawing. And interesting to see a look at the mountains. Presently, the mountain formation mm -hmm. with the modern Nazareth. We're living in a day and age where the Lord is still the God of heaven and the God of earth. He's the same Messiah yesterday, today and forever. He's our Alpha and our Omega. We can trust him in the same way that Abraham trusted him, same way that Nathaniel and Philip and the others who met with Jesus. And we can go and tell others, follow Jesus, because he's coming again soon and we're going to be ready all of those scriptures we've got, prophecies fulfilled, and there's a whole load more prophecies about to be fulfilled around the corner. Are we ready? Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Let's pray. Almighty God, you are our good shepherd. You are preparing a place for us. And we thank you for this amazing grace that we were lost, but now we're found. We're blind, but now we see. Oh, Father, we praise your holy name. Thank you for that. We commit ourselves to you. Lord, by your grace, we want to follow you. Help us to be found faithful. Help us, Lord, to follow and trust you. We ask this. In and through our precious Lord Jesus of Nazareth, yes. the Son of Joseph, the Almighty God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I have decided to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm.